Hello and welcome to more Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. You might notice something a little bit odd today. In the Jiggo Bank right here, or the Jiggy Bank, I've got zero Jiggies, and I've not even unlocked the first game world. We don't even have Nutty Acres unlocked. That is because, well, I tried to record at part 11 before, and I recorded it, I did Logbox 720 Act 4, and in the process, my audio was a bit messed up. So, I had to go and play through the entire game again. Now, I haven't played through all of it yet, and I'll get to why that is in just a minute. But, yes, because the game autosaves all the time, I had to replay a lot. However, although I don't have any Jiggies, check out what I do have. If we go to my statistics, you can see I've already got all 900 notes from Showdown Town right here. I did all the Jinjo and Minjo stuff, and I've got all the crates. But... I'm not going to look at this as a negative, guys. Of course, we had to miss a couple of days because of that. I had to redo some stuff. Sure, that's annoying, but there are some positives. First off, while I was recollecting all these crates, I noticed that I kind of goofed and missed a couple of crates before that we could have gotten. So let's go finally get them. We could have had these for a long time now. One of them, we just go over to Klungo's Arcade, and it's directly behind. I'm pretty sure I missed this one. I'm not 100% sure, but I just can't remember ever picking this crate up. So I'm pretty sure this is one we have not gotten. So right back here, we've got crate number 17. Yeah, as soon as you got the high group wheels and you were able to come to this side of Showdown Town, you could have got this one. It's not a very important crate. There's not a lot of good stuff in it, but it's still a crate to get. So there we go. The next crate is actually a stop and swap. So this one's only relevant to people who have actually done the stop and swap stuff. But we just want to drive right up this way. And it's basically at the top of this little building here. I don't have the springs in this file yet, so I am going to glitch. I know I said I wouldn't glitch, guys, but it's just to show off this crate real quick. So let's go ahead and just do a little little hover just like that. Oop, kind of goofed a little bit. I wanted to jump out of my car right there, but got a little bit dragged to the side. So we'll just jump up right here, and at the very top of this building, we will find the blue stop and swap crate. So let's go ahead and grab that guy, and we'll bring him down. Now there's one other thing right here. Around Showdown Town, there's four or five of these crates, and they've got these little pig guys on top. If you get near them, they'll push you away, and, well, if we go and talk to it, let's go ahead and see what it says here. Whoa, whoa, I am doomed to perch upon this windswept pinnacle until the day I hear the fabled siren's call. We don't have access to that siren's call thing yet. I've tried a lot to glitch my way into getting these crates, and I've had no success, so... Definitely feel free to try to get those via glitching, but trust me, I have tried and I just can't seem to find a way to do it. I can't remember if I already talked about those pig crates. It, it's one of those things where I don't know what I talked about during the episode that, well, got corrupted. So, well, let's go turn these two crates in here. And from the crate 17, we get six more balloons, which, if I didn't get this before, we now have like 18 balloons, which is crazy. And here we get the goldfish from that blue crate we got as well. Kind of silly item, another cosmetic item, but there you go. Now, there's actually another very positive thing that's going to be happening for this playthrough because I had to replay a bunch. So you know in all of the main game worlds, like Nutty Acres and Logbox, every single one of those game worlds has 200 notes. Now, during my regular playthrough before, I kind of collected notes here and there, and the plan was after I beat Nutty Acre 6, for example, then I would go back and get all the notes. The reason I didn't get them earlier is because we didn't have good vehicle parts at the start of the game, but now, I've got a file where I've got none of the notes collected from any of the game worlds, and well, I just collected 41 crates, so I've got lots of great uh, vehicle parts right here. So what do you say we go and get all those notes all in one go this time? Let me just go unlock Nutty Acres and we'll get started. We'll do the first four game worlds, we'll get all all the notes today. I just think this is so awesome that we've got an opportunity where we've got great vehicle parts and zero notes collected so we can really just show all the notes getting collected in one go. I really think, you know, it's annoying that I had to replay some stuff, but I really think the playthrough is going to be better for it. Oh, and by the way, all of the blueprints, all of the vehicles that we've made, we still have those. The blueprint saved separately from your game save file, which means that even though I had to start the game over, I still got all of our vehicles. Into Nutty Acres we go! One small problem is that I don't necessarily have all the vehicle parts. Even though I've got the crates, I don't have the freebies from Mumbo or the stuff from Humble Wumba. Let's see if any of these things I can actually use. Let's see what happens to our crud mobile when I try to use it. All right, I'm gonna have to go make a custom vehicle real quick. There we go, I just filled all the blank spaces with a bunch of blocks. That'll do for now. All right, let's go start collecting notes. I think something still fell off back there. Oh well, I'm not worried about it. But one really bizarre thing about notes in the game worlds here is that they're actually all in clusters. Every single game world has a cluster of 214, uh, 214 clusters. Let me try that explanation again. So every game world has two clusters of 14 notes, three clusters of 19 notes, 
and five clusters of 23 notes. I don't know why exactly it's like that, but that's just kind of a thing. So we'll go around, collect these notes right here, and the rest of these note collections, I'm gonna go ahead and do this in post-commentary with some fast forwarding crud. Alrighty, so the next set of notes we're going to get is over here on the beach. Now, in the past, you guys have seen these notes. I've kind of joked about how I'm gonna get them in the future. I guess now is when we're finally going to get them. So just kind of around here on top of these little hills are the notes. Next is over by Mumbo's Nuts here. You guys have definitely seen me get these before, but you just wanna make sure you don't forget to go down to these little side areas right here because there are some sneaky notes. And then inside, Inside the volcano, right in the center, is a big old bunch of notes, very easy to get. And outside the volcano, over to the right, is this little coliseum. If we go over, go down into the water, and go around the middle, there are some notes down there as well. And then back to the volcano, on top, there's another ring of notes around the top of the volcano there. Next up is this area kind of to the right of the center area. There's this little platform over here, and on top is a bunch of notes to get. And then, of course, another set of notes I've already gotten. Back inside the middle area, there's some more notes here, but just make sure you don't don't miss the one inside the little house. Next, we're gonna go all the way to the top of Nutty Acres. We have to go all the way up and then into the middle, and then you kind of have the ring of notes around this little pole here. And then I decided to jump off and die. Anyways, don't worry about that. The last little bit of notes we have to get is over on this island here, kind of to the northeast. Once we drop down, grab all those, we've got all 200 notes for Nutty Acres. You know, while we're doing Nutty Acres 4 again, I might as well show off how to get that one trophy that we missed a long time ago. How to do that easier. So let me go make a vehicle real quick. Alrighty, we're gonna see if this works. Ideally, we would have more engines, but basically what I've done right here is I made a box out of a bunch of panels and L panels. On the back, we've just got a bunch of engines. The wedges aren't that important. They're just to block off the back right here. So we've got a bunch of small engines, medium engines. We've got some fuels. Of course, we've got all the propellers that I have, which right now is just uh, six small propellers. And I've got the folding wings right here. And the most important thing at the back right here, we do have a suck and blow. So the idea is that we're actually going to suck Mr. Fit into our little cage right here. And then we're going to carry him to the end of his little escort mission. Let's go see if this vehicle actually works. Let's give it a test. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is pause. I'm going to go to Assign Components, and I want to put the spring over to X. Because, well, we've only got three slots, and I want to have the wings, the springs. Actually, you know what? Let's put the spring on A, and we're going to put the suck on X. That way it's easier to push A and B at the same time there. All right. So now let's see if we can suck this guy in. Oh. Would you get in there? There you go. Okay, so we got him in, and now all we have to do is, oh boy, get turned around. The problem is he's going to be moving around a lot. So what we want to do is try to get some speed, see if we can jump into the air and start flying just like that, and hopefully he won't fall out. Now I don't, oh, he fell out. Okay. You don't want to be sucking the entire time because that'll make it so it's hard to actually move forward, but at the same time, you might want to suck occasionally to make sure he doesn't fall out. So let me try that again. I got Mr. Fit sucked in. We've gone off the hill, but I'm... Okay, we're getting some speed. Good. So we want to take him right up the hill into this little uh, patch right here. And there you go. You can see we got it. He does take a little damage by bopping around, but... As you can see, that's a much, much easier way to get the trophy. It might take a few tries, but it's still way easier. And you know, since we're doing Nutty Acres Act 2 again, I can show you guys using the Freeze Easy on the Fireball mission here. Wow, it's been so long since we did this one, but if you guys remember, what we had to do was take these balls and knock them into the water to cool them off. But now I've got the Freeze Easy weapon on the front. Let me go make sure I actually assign this guy. We'll just stick it on... Uh, you know what? We'll actually stick that on, like, B. And, uh, well, let's check it out. All you do is you go up to it like that, you just shoot it, it's instantly frozen. You don't have to go dip it in the water. Now, if you're a good shot, you can shoot it from a distance like that. It's pretty hard to aim, though, so I like to kind of just get up next to it and just shoot it like that. It's so much easier than having to knock it in the water. And there we go, we're done! You know, I wasn't really sure when I wanted to show this. I know that I wanted to, I just wasn't sure when, but... Since we're kind of showing off some tricks right now, let me show you guys a couple of really cool tricks we can do. Here I'm going to start a new vehicle. We're going to drop down a seat, stick a couple of wings on there like this, and then I'm going to go to gadgets and once again get out the suck and blow, and we're actually going to point it behind us. We can use this as an engine, basically, by having it blow. Watch this crud. It takes a little while to get off. You, you could put some springs on here to actually help you launch. But as you can see, once you're in the air, it's a pretty fast plane, and it's got infinite fuel. So very easy design. This will be able to beat most of the air races in the game. It's awesome. So definitely give this one a shot here. I've only got three springs right now, so it's a little bit awkward, but I would recommend probably putting four springs just like on these spots right here, and that'll probably work out better. Maybe three would work right there, actually. Yep, there you go. We can get up in the air much easier now. So a very, very simple but awesome vehicle. The next thing I want to show off here is I'm going to take a basic vehicle like this, but pretend we're doing like a ground race. Something very, very handy you can do. 
put propellers on top, but what we're going to do is kind of target them like this. Oop, not like that. Alright, we're gonna press RB, right bumper, and we're actually gonna set them to push. What this will do is basically it'll provide like a downward force on our vehicle, which will make us stick to the ground basically. If you've ever been doing a ground race and you bump into like one tiny thing and it sends your car flying, this will completely fix that. Not only that, it'll just, in general, give you way better vehicle handling. Let me actually try to get on the ground so I can show it better. All right, one really odd but important thing with this, for some reason if you've got wings equipped, I don't know why, even when they're put away, it doesn't really work. So this would be a vehicle that you only use on the ground here. But look at this crud, look how good this handling is. Look how sharp I can turn without skidding at all. It's amazing. And not only that, like say I go over a bump like this, we're back on the ground instantly. We don't, we're not flying off into space or some crud like that. It works really well. And also, you can gosh dang drive it on walls. It's so good. It is like, it, it like changes the game experience completely. Now here's the downside to doing this. The problem is that we can't reverse. If we want to go backwards, well, I guess it kind of works because my car is heavy enough, but it's still a helicopter. It's going to try to lift you off of the ground and it's not going to work out that well. So if you crash, say you're stuck against a wall. Say I'm like this and I can't, I can't get away from the wall very easily. I would just hop out of your vehicle and pick it up manually like that. And uh, that works a lot better. Now in the near future, we will get some folding propellers like we have for folding wings. And once you get those, then you can put the propellers away and you can back up that way. But still, you should seriously try this. It's amazingly helpful. Well, with that out of the way, let's go and do some note collecting in Logbox. Actually, I got to stash like eight Jiggies right now. By the way, I have not stashed any Jiggies except for the first one from Nutty Acres, but I already got four Tamper Switches and the five Jelly Dodger ones, so I'm already at 10 Jiggies. <coughs> Time for some Logbox note collecting. So this first set of notes is pretty obvious. You're just driving on these little discs down here. There's like three discs on one side. You drive around you collect the notes, you're good. Next, I went up to the, well, next floor, and around the center here, there are some notes. However, there's one very sneaky note that I missed, and it took me like half an hour to find it. I'll be pointing that out at the end of this. I got the clip for it and everything. Down here, we've got some more notes. This, if you did the taxi mission where you have to deliver the, the passengers or whatever, one of the passengers would be on this spot, so you'll find these notes pretty easily. But there is a silver note up here, so you gotta watch out for that one. And of course, this is another set you've seen me already collect, but inside the little uh, room on the side, here next to one of the missions. Well, there's some notes on this little chip thing. Up by this giant crayon thing right here, we saw that one during one of the Jinjo uh, fetch missions. There's a bunch of notes behind it. I forget which act it is, but one of the acts also has you enter the act, like right on top of these notes as well. There's another set of notes right here, pretty high up, but not quite at the very highest level. So they're a little bit tricky to find, but just keep in mind, very high up, but not all the way at the top. And of course, you can always be looking at my mini-map to try to help you figure out where exactly my character is here. Now, this is a set of notes you probably got during the Grunty Battle in Act 3, but just around this little top place here, there's a bunch of notes around the edge. Now, still at the top, see that crud off in the distance, that giant gold thing? We're gonna fly over to that, because there's a gap in the back, and if you go inside there, there's uh, some more notes as well. Right here, I kind of goofed. I crashed my vehicle and dropped a note down. If you ever happen to drop a note like that, well, one, you could go try to chase it like I did here, but another option is you could leave the act, go back in, and all the notes will reset to their original positions. Next, we're actually going inside the giant purple tank up top. I don't know why I'm swimming right here, but, well, you can swim. You can also just drive down there with your car, but once you get inside there, the thing is going to split off into a couple of different paths. We want to take a very certain path here, which is not whatever path I just took here. It's not this path. It's a different one. There we go. Once we take the correct path, there will be a little drop-off that goes down and there's gonna be all these little circle things in the center of each circle is a note so just go around and get all those there you go i think in act six there's a mission that takes you down here as well so you'd find it naturally now these ones are a bit of a pain in the butt we've got the little pool right here this is not the big pool this is the little mini one but on the side there are these silver heat sink looking things and inside are a bunch of notes the problem is you kind of have to go all over the place i would recommend starting at the top and trying to work your way down but it took me a few tries going through this to not miss any notes, so it might take a couple tries. Just kind of look everywhere, eventually you'll find them. Remember how I mentioned a very sneaky note that took me half an hour to find? Well, it's back around this little middle section, and it's kind of just chilling up in between this little pipe right here. So there it is. And with that, we've got all the notes for Logbox 720. Boop bop. Ah. Uh, time for some Banjoland collecting. Of course, the easiest notes around, eh? 
around because they're around the statue here. Yeah, they're just around the Banjo statue at the entrance to Act 1. Then we've got a bunch of notes along this little scarf here that leads to the giant snowman in the center. There's a bunch of notes here next to all these eggs. This one is next to one of the Jinjo missions as well. And then we've got another cluster of notes here, kind of in the uh, football slash soccer field on top of the giant gold thing. Uh, I think Act 4, the, the one with the Grunty mission, you enter right here, so it's very easy to find. Not too far from that last one, down, kind of down the slope, there's a giant Cheeto book. Good old reference to Cheeto, but he's also got a bunch of notes on him. You might be noticing already that the notes in Banjo Land are really easy to find. Also in the water area, there's the Rusty Bucket Bay boat, and on top of it, there's a bunch of notes here as well. So make sure you climb all the way to the top, because there's some good stuff up there. And another very easy one, right next to the lake area, there's the whole frozen bit, and inside the igloo, some more notes. Now this one is a little bit more sneaky, but if we go down into the lake, there is a tunnel that goes underneath the igloo, and inside we've got like this giant treasure room with a bunch of notes inside. This one's not the easiest to find, but we got like the giant mumbo skull right there and off to the left are these platforms and on top of those are the notes and then the last bit to find is kind of at the top of the stage on top of the snowman is this little generator thing and there's the last of the notes as you can see banjo land very easy hooray i get to do klungo's arcade again are you kidding me what the crud is this? I won and it crashed! Time for some Gigaseum note collecting. Gigaseum is also a very easy stage when it comes to note collecting, so we're gonna fly right through this. As you can see, the first little cluster is on top of this, I guess, giant dartboard. And we've got some more down below, on top of these little platforms, on top of the little hills. They're kind of scattered all over the place, but all these little sport balls on top, we got some notes. This one's all the way to one of the sides of the stadium, but you'll see these giant stacks of dice and kind of scattered about are some more notes here. And then inside one of these fountains, you'll, you'll just have to look at my compass and my minimap and stuff to try to orient yourself because there's a lot of fountains here, but in this particular fountain, there's some notes. And again, on one of the sides, or on both sides really, there's a bunch of these little audience platforms and one of them, I think it's on the north side, has a bunch of notes right here. This one's over by the pizza area where we did that pizza mission. There's a a little hot dog stand and around it are some notes yep it's, it's a hot dog stand these ones are very easy down the giant ramp that you're gonna go down for missions anyways there's some notes i don't know why i'm pointing out that every cluster has notes you guys know what we're collecting here but this one right here it's kind of in the top middle area and it's next to one of the jinjo missions as well this one is a little tricky to find it's all the way to one of the sides of the stadium there's these two giant green buildings and around the edge of one of them well are some notes. Again, I'm, I'm pointing out we're collecting notes. You guys already know. And this last cluster right here is once again in one of the, uh, one of the audience platoons. I don't know what they call it. One of the audience stands, but this one is not down with all the people. It's up on top of the tent. And that's it. Gigaseum is completed. But guys, this took me about three hours to record. I was expecting to do a little bit more after this, but I know it's going to be a big editing project. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. It's probably going to be a bit of a short episode, but like I said, lots of editing and it took me a long time to actually do it. So we'll be back next time and we're going to go tackle Logbox Act 4, probably Act 5 as well. So... I'll see you guys then. Take care!